What's up everybody? Welcome back to another one of my videos and in this video we're going to be focusing on what you should be focusing on after the draft. So this is our draft af aftermath uh, video. So the first thing you should do is just check out your roster. See how you did. Do you feel good about it? you feel like you could improve on some things? Like, just check it out. More importantly though, check the updates on your players. So the day after my league drafted, two things happened. News broke out about TJ Warren, about uh, suffering a right foot injury, and then news also bro broke out about Russell Westbrook and how he won't be playing in back-to-backs, which would have changes, changed everything in our draft. Next up, use your IR slot if you have an injured player. IR slots are only acceptable when players have the O, which stands for out designation. And also learn of your team's strengths and weaknesses. Like after the more experience you get, like if you're a beginner, you're not going to know what kind of team you have exactly. But the more you play after year in and year out of playing this, you're just going to be able to look at your team and be like, all right, I'm strong in this, this, and that. And I'm probably weak in this, this, and that, and I should be competitive in the rest of the categories. Second up, you should check your waivers. Learn who went undrafted to see what kind of value is in the free agent pool. So they, these are players I deem notable in different types of leagues, in 18, 10 team, 12 team, and even 14 team leagues. I didn't do any more because after that, I... I don't feel like I could give valuable information, but up to 14 team leagues, I feel like I could at least give some kind of value to players who play in those types of leagues. So I'm not going to go over all these players. Please feel free to pause the video and look through the list. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to take a second to say please like this video if you find it informative or helpful. And make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be coming out with more information that can help you win your fantasy league this year. And just all around fantasy basketball content. Alright, so moving on. There, are, there always seems to be someone who falls through the cracks. In my league personally, Derek White actually went undrafted. Now I run a 10-team nine cat league, but uh, it's 14 rounds, so not 13. So 14 rounds, which is 140 players. So he is actually hurt right now. So I ended up using my waiver claim on him because I think it's worth it. So I used the second overall waiver claim because if nothing else, I will be using him for trade bait when he becomes healthy. Now, before you... you before you use your waiver claim, know your position. Like I said, I had the second overall waiver claim. And you want to know where you, where you are because it's valuable. Your waiver claim number is valuable. Also important, make sure anyone you pick up plays the first regular season night. So what I mean by that is um, after waivers go through, if you're looking at free agency and you're like, oh, that's good player to add on to my team for this first matchup. Well, just make sure he plays the first night. And make sure you have a, a place for him to play on that first night. If your team's full that first night, which I highly doubt, for at least specifically this year, if it is somehow full, then you don't want to pick up anyone on the first night. You want to pick someone up on the second night. You want to be able to play that player on the very first day um, that you have an available spot because odds are you're going to want to drop that player and pick up someone new, and that's how the waiver wire works throughout the week. And that's that could be the difference between winning or losing a matchup, getting those three or four extra bodies in, in your lineup every week. All right, so like I just said earlier, know your position. Your waiver claim placement should be the exact opposite order of your draft position. And if it's not, you need to speak, you need to have a talk with your manager because something's up with that. Uh, most managers run it where if you draft first in the draft, then you will be picking last in waivers. Very, very rarely will they have the randomizer for that. And you just want to keep track of the, um, the waivers because I also have heard in past the past where the commissioner will mess with it and they will 
put people above in the waiver order. But you just want, always want to know where your number is, and particularly in the beginning of the year. Because if someone did fall through the cracks and you like someone who's on that waiver wire, you're going to want to use it. But let's talk more about the the placement, your waiver uh, claim placement. So your waiver position holds value. The higher you are, the better shot you have at grabbing a solid or even good player that can last on your team throughout the year. So do not waste your waiver wire claim on an undrafted player unless the player has or will have good value. So you, you don't want to just use it up just to use it. You want to save it because every year there's going to be a player out there that gets dropped because a team's just in a bad spot and he has to drop drop a valuable player. And it happens every, to at least one team every year in almost every league. And you want to be that guy who picks up that player. So if you start the season off between one and three and you don't feel like there's much value in the free agent pool, let the waivers go through and then pick up your guy. So what I mean by that is after two full days, usually it's two full days, you're going to have to look at your league settings. But the default setting is after two full days of a player being on waivers to be claimed, if they are not claimed, they just go into the free agency pool. So you don't have to put a waiver claim in on them. You just pick them right up from the free agency pool instead of wasting your claim. But the risk with that is if someone puts in a claim, you could lose out on that player that you may want. So it's like a double-edged sword right there. So also, if you're between 6th and 10th in a 10-man league, Using a claim is likely the right strategy in any case if you find any kind kind of value on any uh, undrafted player, as because you're not you, your placement isn't all that valuable, and odds are you're going to be able to get up to sixth place again in no time. All right, so the third thing you want to do after you draft your team is in categories know your team's strengths and weaknesses. Furthermore, know your first week opponent's strength and weaknesses. Now, I have a, t a video coming out tomorrow, and that's called um, something like Fantasy Basketball In-Depth Analysis on Gauging Your Team in Category Leagues. So, like I said, keep an eye out. It's coming out tomorrow at some point, and it will help further you. It's a great in-depth video if you decide to do all the work that I do. Um, show you in the video and it can help you overall win your championship if nothing else it will help you make playoffs or at least compete for playoffs all right so moving on you can gain an advantage by picking up a free agent before the season starts as you only get so many waiver pickups per week but they do not begin so the waiver um the waiver or like the pickups like if you pick up someone, like in the first week, the default number is three. So you get to pick up three people in that week. Or and after the first week, because the it's not a full week, it's four. So you could pick up someone now and not have it um added to your total because it doesn't begin until the regular season starts. So you can pick up a hundred players between now and Monday. And you will still be at zero for week one of your matchup in the waivers. So you'll still be able to pick up three people throughout the week. But as soon as Tuesday hits, then they start counting and you only get those three. Or whatever the league setting is for your league. In my league, is three. This is important because the first week of the season always starts on a Tuesday. Meaning there's only six days in the first week's matchup. And... The reason why that's important, and especially more so on this year, is because we're starting on Christmas week, and we don't have that extra day to have all of our players play an extra day. And in this year, we only have about 33 people or players playing this in the beginning week. So adding an additional player before the season uh, starts, and then using your waivers throughout the week, to boost it from 32 or 33 players to 36 or 37 players, that, well, that could be a difference between winning or losing your week right there. Now, also, make sure any specialist you pick up solely for the purpose of playing against your week one opponent plays the first night 
or the roster spot will have been for nothing. So don't start your season, pick up the specials, and mess up like on my team, for example. I had no one playing on that Tuesday, but I have every single player on my roster playing on Wednesday. So I don't want that. So I ended up actually... I had Derek White I picked up, and he actually got uh, the out designation. So I put him on my IR and picked up Terry and Prince, who does play on Tuesday. So I'll have him, and his stats will count for me because I put him into my lineup for that Tuesday instead of uh, picking someone like, let's say, Derek White wasn't injured. Well, he doesn't play Tuesday. He plays Wednesday. So um, I will have lost any production that Prince or white will have put up. You guys see what I'm saying? Like if if um, I kept white and he wasn't injured, if he did play, he wouldn't have been able to add to my weekly totals. But since Prince does play, and I have no one playing on the first night of the week, I will be put, I, and since I have him in my lineup, he will be able to provide value for me. And some value is better than no value. All right, so here's a quick breakdown conclusion for your draft aftermath. You want to check your team for injuries, so you can put them on an IR and to check out the, the free agent pool. And you also want to uh, check your strengths and weaknesses. Second, you want to check the free agent pool and your waiver claim number so you know whether or not you feel like there's value in using it or not. And third and last, Learn your first week opponent's strengths and weaknesses so you can better prepare your team in the in your first week. All right, guys, remember, please like this video if you found it helpful and informative and sub subscribe to my channel as I will be dropping fantasy basketball content all year round. All right, guys, that's all I have for you. Remember, the in-depth analysis on how to gauge your category teams video will be out tomorrow so keep an eye out for it make sure you don't want to miss that and that's all i have for you guys have a good night